You know, the introduction is typically the easiest part of these analysis videos to write. By the time I begin writing the script, I've usually settled on the focus for the video and the introduction is just a matter of teasing that ultimate point. Usually any difficulty I have writing an intro comes from the story not having a compelling point to make, but this time I seem to have the opposite problem. Today's story spans an entire episode and has enough noteworthy moments to create at least three videos. So sit back, relax, and grab some popcorn because here we have a story that challenges Takagi's perception of her future with Nishikata, shows us how the duo's relationship is perceived by those around them, and for the sake of fulfilling an obligation of an old Reddit comment, we will discuss why people love this show in the first place place. All this and more in today's analysis of Camping Trip, an original story that takes up the entirety of episode 7. As I'm sure you know, Takagi-san stands out from other romance anime by revolving the conflict around mind games and competitions that our main characters have. Most other romance anime centers its conflict around obstacles that could prevent the main couple from getting together. Within this episode, we will get our first and only taste of the latter kind of conflict, a moment in which our characters question whether or not they will get together. However, the beginning of this episode seems determined to reassure us that no matter what adversity our main duo face, their relationship is inevitable. The show does this by giving us a brief look at a grown-up looking at a photo album right before the OP. Any viewers who are familiar with the manga will know that this adult is Takagi in the future. Given that her attire is identical to that in the manga's 31st chapter, Memories, we can assume that the ending of that chapter is canon to this anime as well, but we can't know for sure unless this scene gets expanded on. But for the time being, we can interpret this as an affirmation that our main characters do end up together. In the following scene we get a moment that serves as a point of contrast between the characters as they are now and how they were when the show began. Remember back in Cleaning Duty when Nakai encouraged Nishikata with a big thumbs up how Nishikata had no idea what he was talking about and Mano dragged Nakai away to prevent him from putting pressure on the pair? Well compare that to this moment from episode 7 and you can clearly see how Nishikata has changed as well as the general perception of their relationship by others. For starters, Nishikata knows exactly what Nakai is talking about right away and goes about trying to deny it, just like he will later with Takeo and Kimura, who will believe him as much as Nakai does. Recently within the timeline of the show, Nishikata seems more aware of the perception of his and Takagi's relationship. This is why he immediately thought about denying he was on a date in date, despite his friends having not said anything and why he now understands exactly what Nakai is implying. Also, the fact that Mano does not restrict Nakai this time goes to show her confidence that things will work out for Takagi and Nishikata, no matter what Nakai does. In Cleaning Duty, it was still too early to tell just how well Takagi and Nishikata would get on, so putting unnecessary pressure on them may have led to a premature separation. However, at this point in the story, nothing Nakai says will put the kind of pressure on these two that will split them up. They've come too far for that. Mano understands this so does not get in Takai's way and even smiles with him as Takagi and Nishikata take their leave. Last thing worth mentioning about this scene is Nishikata's attempt to leave Mano alone with Nakai. As well as being a nice callback to Waterslide, it also serves to show us that Nishikata does understand how Mano feels. Takagi understands what Nishikata is thinking and works with him to leave the two alone together. The fact that Nishikata can understand how a girl feels about her crush will add more weight to another moment in this episode. Next, we get to the scene where Takagi and Nishikata play an eating game, and controversially, I don't have much to say about this scene that I haven't already said plenty of times. Nishikata has a plan to win against Takagi, but has that plan turned back on him. Pretty simple stuff. However, since I don't have much to say about the scene itself, I am instead going to use it as a vessel to make a point. Not just about this show, but about media in general. I'm going to turn off the visuals for a moment, because I'm going to describe a scene and I want you to picture it in your head. Our main characters have made it into the shelter. When Takagi realises that Nishikata is nervous, she puts on a scowl and chastises him. My god, you're disgusting. Nishikata is stunned silent and Takagi continues. How can you be so perverted and yet so clueless? What is the matter with you? He scrambles his brain trying to respond but instead begins to panic. His eyes begin to well up with tears and upon realising what she has done, Takagi laughs. You really are pathetic, Nishikata. Was that uncomfortable to listen to? Because I can assure you it was uncomfortable to write. You're probably thinking that the Takagi I described sounds more like Nagatoro and I will admit I took some inspiration from that character to create this bizarro Takagi, but why? Why would I corrupt an anime like Takagi-san to this extent? 
Well, because I have a point to make, of course. When episode 7 first came out, it was celebrated as the best episode the show had ever had. I'm certain that even with Summer Festival being released, there will still be some who prefer Camping Trip. So among all the praise this episode was receiving, some of which from yours truly, you can imagine the disconnect people must have felt when they found a Reddit post titled, Absolutely Unpopular Opinion. Episode 7 is one of, if not THE worst episode the series came up with by FP Korea. Their post goes into detail about how this episode is packed to the gills with overused cliches and how the episode as a whole is a blemish on the rest of the series, which until that point had managed to be fresh and original. Going through FP Korea's points one by one, I can't argue with any of them. They're right. The episode does get generic and does fall into similar tropes. So if I agree with the individual points being made, then how can I disagree with the sentiment of the post? The point that episode 7 is one of the worst. Well, I could just say it's just my opinion, but I'd like to hold myself to a higher standard than cracking out that old non-argument. Thinking about the disparity between agreeing with the facts but disagreeing with the ultimate point got me thinking about an observation of this show that can be used for literally any piece of media you could imagine. I would love to really dig into this observation, but for the meantime, I can only boil it down to a single, simple sounding but complex to answer question. Why do people enjoy Takagi-san? Like I said, you can apply this question to any piece of media in existence, from ancient plays to modern memes. I would argue that the answer to this question for most of the fanbase is, it's a light-hearted and cutesy story, which is why my corrupted scene from before made you feel so uncomfortable. If that was how the scene actually went, it would have taken the part of the show you enjoyed the most and thrown it away. That is how FP Korea might have felt watching this episode. The part of the show that gave them the most enjoyment, the sense of fresh originality, was taken away for seemingly no reason. Since my enjoyment of the show is not rooted in its originality, I was able to enjoy the episode regardless. However, if the scene I modified earlier had contained Nishikata saying that he didn't want to walk with Takagi anymore out of embarrassment, I would probably write a very similar post to FP Korea, as the show would have taken the aspect of the story that I enjoy the most, the sense of progression, and thrown that away. I'm fascinated by this post because it gives me insight into the mind of someone who loves the show just as much as I do, but for completely different reasons. I urge you all to ask yourself the question, why do I enjoy X? Not only about Takagi-san, but any piece of media that you show interest in. People thinking more thoroughly about the media they consume will only ever lead to better media. Also, props to the users and subreddit mods who used this post to discuss the merits of the show. A very vocal minority of commenters clearly felt offended that someone didn't like the episode as much as they claimed to, and the post itself sits at a score of zero, evidently downvoted by those who didn't find it as interesting as I did. Anyway, getting back into events that actually happened in the episode, we then move on to an interesting exchange between Hamaguchi and Hojo. It is heavily implied that the chunky curry Hamaguchi is eating was made by Hojo. Hearing him defend the curry got her attention, but what made her happy was seeing him genuinely enjoy the food. Remember, the only time we have seen these two together was in Sneeze, where Hamaguchi tries to drink coffee in a bid to appear more mature. But this moment here shows him acting in a genuine way, which Hojo appears to appreciate more than his posturing. We then get to the folk dance. Takagi has set up the board, giving Nishikata an excuse to want to dance with her by challenging him to hold her hand and telling him about a rumor that if you have a crush on the last person you hold hands with, the both of you will fall in love with each other. With all the pieces in place, we begin to build up to the ultimate moment of the episode. Nishikata slowly but surely gets closer to Takagi, getting so distracted staring at her that he accidentally holds up the line. She looks at him over her shoulder and even excitedly whispers to him when they are next. He reassures himself that he is not her crush so it doesn't matter if they finish together, although he seemingly doesn't believe that himself. At last it is their turn. They approach each other, hands stretched out to meet, when the music stops. Just a second more and they would have at least touched hands, giving Takagi a shred of hope that the rumour still applies, but it's over. Now the shots we get of the other classmates may seem like comic relief, and in the case of Kimura, Mano and Nakai, it certainly is. But there's something that stands out to me about this montage, especially when we see how Hamaguchi ended things. How come everyone finishes the dance holding someone else's hand, except for Nishikata and Takagi? Well, if you look closely at the moment before they begin approaching each other, Nishikata lets his embarrassment get the better of him, and he hesitates. Only for a moment, but like I said before, one more second is all it would have taken for the two to at least touch hands. 
Hamaguchi finished up holding hands with Hojo because he is far more assertive than Nishikata and likely didn't hesitate. Even someone as laid back as Nakai managed to get to Kimura in time to finish the dance holding his hand. So just like in Summer Festival, the main thing keeping Nishikata and Takagi apart is Nishikata's embarrassment. I feel like I should add a quick aside here, I'm not actually deriding Nishikata, being nervous is just who he is. Just because embarrassment is the flaw that causes him the most issues in this season does not mean I think he is a bad person for it, or that he does any of it intentionally. I'm merely pointing it out as a character flaw that he struggles to overcome. But what stands out to me about this moment more than anything else is the impact it has on Takagi. Takagi is known to be superstitious. She wrote Nishikata's name on her eraser because of an urban myth. She knew all the ghost stories about the tunnel in their town. She put her trust into fortune telling. She believed the rumour about the water slide and she believed in this rumour about the dance. Takagi puts a lot of faith in her inevitable romance with Nishikata thanks to things she can consider signs from the universe and Nishikata himself. At this moment, the universe has seemingly conspired against Takagi by preventing her from holding Nishikata's hand and therefore having him fall in love with her. She seems so upset by this but she all but spills her feelings for Nishikata right there, admitting that had they held hands they would have fallen in love, implicitly admitting her feelings for him. She might as well. In her mind, right now, she has been told by the universe that she and he are not meant to be, so what does she have to lose? Nishikata unwittingly confirms this by saying he's only upset that he couldn't win. This could easily be interpreted by Takagi as Nishikata stating his lack of romantic interest in her. His face shows disappointment, but not dishonesty, so it stands the reason that Nishikata could have just shot her down and is feeling bad about it. Of course, we know that this isn't true. He likely feels disappointed that he couldn't dance with Takagi after all. Remember, if he were dreading the dance as much as he thought he was, he would have shown relief when the music stopped. If he was upset about having not won their game, he would have worn a completely different expression and lamented how close he was to victory. He only says he's upset about not winning because that is the only way he can interpret his own feelings. When you take into account how well he understood Mano earlier this episode, it's easy to see how Takagi could have gotten the wrong idea that he must have understood her feelings and not reciprocated them. And so she walks away, believing that her goal of becoming Nishikata's girlfriend is over, that she's lost, that the universe wills it so, and so does the boy she loves. Of course, we then remember that at the beginning of this episode, we were all but assured that these two would end up together. It was not the universe that prevented the two from touching hands, it was Nishkata's nerves. And the universe is going to correct itself. Why can't Nishkata get to sleep? Is it because the disappointment from before is keeping him awake? Yep, been there buddy. Is it because the universe is determined to fix his mess? Perhaps. And of course, after going for a walk, under the glittery night sky, he finds Takagi. I want you to take a moment to appreciate this smile. Look at it. We find out later that Takagi was wishing on the stars to stargaze with Nishikata. So to reiterate, she has just finished the dance feeling like the universe has told her that she will never be with Nishikata. And then just as she was at her lowest, she wished to watch the stars with him, and lo and behold, there he is. I cannot begin to explain the unfiltered joy that Takagi must be feeling in this moment. I believe the significance of Tanabe nearly catching them is to reassure Takagi that her and Nishikata are meant to be together. Had Tanabe caught them, they would have been separated, but they never were. When Takagi suggests that they stay a little longer to avoid Tanabe, Nishikata could easily say that he will sneak back, or that since their teacher is out on patrol, he likely won't still be in the same place. But he doesn't. Nishikata agrees to stay despite the reason being nonsensical, and Takagi seemingly understands this given her expression. It is at this point that Nishikata initiates a normal conversation. No plotting, no ulterior motive, he just wants to talk to Takagi, just like she wanted in April Fools. He asks her what she wished to the stars for, and when he learns it was to stargaze with him, he becomes nervous. When Takagi realises this, her mouth slightly curves the way it did in Critical Hit, albeit far less extreme. After the universe has confirmed that Takagi and Nishikata are meant to be, Nishikata's nervous reaction tells Takagi that he does like her despite what he said before, and this revelation almost brings her to tears. Takagi is reminded that Nishikata just can't comprehend a romantic relationship, not out of disinterest, but rather out of immaturity. While she's usually patient with him in regards to this, after the scare she had gotten earlier, she subtly tells him that she would like him to see her as a potential partner someday. She does this by referencing Tanabata. 
Tanabara, for those of you who are not aware, is a story of two people who love each other so dearly they can only meet once a year via a bridge of stars. What Takagi is implying here is that Nishikata should come around to her way of thinking, viewing their relationship as one that could become romantic. She tells him to cross the Milky Way to meet her as a lover, stating her desire while acknowledging the struggle that Nishikata would have to endure to make it happen. Of course, Nishikata does not understand what she is saying, which Takagi is seemingly fine with having gotten it off her chest before returning to the status quo, more confident than ever that it's where she ought to be. What I love about this episode more than anything else is the challenge it forces Takagi to face. She has always been so confident that she and Nishikata would end up together she began to take it for granted, just like we as an audience have. So seeing her have to contend with the fact that she might be wrong, while heartbreaking, was interesting and the overall show is better for it. The ED for this episode, Stars, when translated into English, is a story about someone praying to a star that they cannot see for love. I believe this is a metaphor for knowing that love is there, even if one cannot see it. Which is the ultimate lesson that Takagi has learned in this episode. Just because Nishikata isn't capable of comprehending, accepting, or showing his romantic feelings for her, does not mean they are not there. And that is it for this analysis. Thank you to Orion Tran for supporting me on Patreon. If you'd like to join Orion or see the outtakes for free, you can do so via links in the description. I'd recommend watching these outtakes since there's a lot of cut content in them this week. Thank you all very much for watching and I will see you next time.